Uh, hello, my name is Wu Sun Yang, and I'm in the uh, also in the same group, user engagement group, and uh, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the 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 debugging tools on 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 Cori system. So this will be a very quick tour. It's not like a hands-on session. Probably the best way to learn how to use the debugging tools is to use uh, I through the hands-on session. But uh, this is really I'll be probably skipping on the surface here. Anyway, so the uh, the intention is uh, for you to quickly introduce us uh, what, ki what kind of debugging tools we have, how you can start, and what features they have, so that and the which t debugging tool you should use for certain purpose. Okay, so when you start to modify your code, you see some of these errors. You know, the program sometimes it, it used to be running okay, but suddenly the program crashes or program hangs because you may have uh, some deadlock situation uh, in the MPI or there may be some infinite loop unintentionally or you got uh, some wrong results. So the then question is how do you find uh, these kind of errors and how do you fix it, fix it? So easy way is to put a print statement here and there. The easy way, uh, <laughs> nothing to learn here, but uh, the problem here is that it is very difficult to guess where to put these print statements, right? Especially if it is uh, in a parallel code using lots of NPI uh, tasks, it will be difficult. It can be from uh, in a different rank, for instance. And uh, also what to print. So if you guess is incorrect the, about the location or the variable to print, then you have to move the print statement somewhere else that means that you have to recompile and submit the job again, and you have to do uh, this kind of loop over and over again. So this is a very tedious and exhausting and very time consuming. And uh, also, from this output, it's very difficult to extract information about the, the, uh, the error that you saw here. So debuggers are here to you know, remedy this situation. You don't need to compile over and over again. You just compile once, and you run it under the control of a debugger. And you can make the program stop. You can make the debugger to display the variables that you want to check. And, uh, and also, you can actually use uh, the uh, visualization tool to display the variable, to see the whether that there's some uh, you know very strange you know anomaly appear, and that's where that the problem might be, right? And this kind of thing. So you can use this tool quite easily. So we have uh, several kinds of debugging tools here. So the first kind is uh, the more traditional parallel graphical uh, uh, GUI-based debugging tools called the DDT and the total view. And the most of people are using DDT, but uh, they are kind of complementary. Sometimes DDT misses the uh, certain, certain things, and in that case, you can use a total view to find the bug. So if uh, usually DDT is very more intuitive, so I would like to suggest you to DDT, but sometimes it misses a certain debugging situation. So in that case, we have to use a total view. And also more, the, there are other kinds of uh, specialized debuggers, like a stat. It doesn't care about the, the values. It just to display the core stack traces from all the MPI ranks in a graphical form. So it's very easy to see that the, where the code is hanging, for instance. So if the code is hanging, the first thing, the first thing that you can try is the stat, for instance. And the ATP, this is Kratos. It is, it is basically, ba it is using the stat underneath. So what it does is that the, when the program crashes, it calls stat to show that the, to capture the course, uh, core backtraces at the, uh, the failure point. So these are very lightweighted, uh, but it's very powerful. So whenever some people has a, uh, they don't know where the code is, crashing, so I usually suggest that these things here. And so also there are other kinds, you know, Belgrade, which is very popular, 
Uh, it is actually a suite of debugging and the profiling tools here. But the people use it mostly for this MAMP check. This is a very powerful memory debugging tool. It's a very de it gives a very detailed report about the, where the memory error, uh, uh, errors are occurring here. And also, we have a very nice tool, Intel Inspector. Uh, with, the, with it, we can detect the uh, threading, uh, the race condition, for instance, for different threads if we use the OpenMP. It can detect the threading con uh, error, or it can detect the memory error. So DDTN total view. So as I said, uh, this is a traditional parallel debuggers. Uh, it can be used with C, C++, Fortran, MPI, OpenMP, pthread, et cetera. Uh, DDT, we can use the DTT uh, up to about 8,000 MPI tasks. So, but we have a very small uh, licenses uh, for total view. So for debugging a large, you know, large application, you have to use the DDT. But uh, the 8,000, uh, the licenses are shared among all users. If some people are using half of, half of them, you can only run up to the 4,000, for instance. So the way to run the, uh, to use the DDT is to actually to build your code so that it can be used by the debugger. <coughs> the thing that is needed is a minus G flag. That is to generate the debugging symbol so that the debugger can use them to display or to, uh, to for, uh, for you to interact with the debugger. Okay, once you do that, then you start the interactive batch job using SL as uh, Helen explained already. And then uh, load the Alinea Forge module and the start DDT like that. And then it will show the, the startup window and then you can you know, indicate whether this is OpenMP debug code or you, you may want to specify, uh, for instance, minus C value, minus dash dash uh, the CPU bind equals cores, et cetera. That's around the arguments as well. So, so as Steve mentioned this morning, when you are working, not working here, but working somewhere else, the X11, uh, the, the protocol is, uh, is not very efficient over network here. So because of very high latency and the low bandwidth, it's kind of opposite. So, you have to use the NX, basically. Or if you use the ARM, the, uh, the Alinea tool, then the, uh, we can use the uh, East remote client uh, program. And then you can run it from your desktop. And then you start, you start your job on Cori. And then you can send that information to your desktop. And they kind of interact with each other. And this is really fast. Uh, no, uh, no latency. It's really fast. Actually, it's faster than NX here. So, for detailed information, how to set the uh, uh, for the remote client, you have to go to here. But uh, this is the way the things that you do. Basically, you set the uh, uh, this. You, you have to put this exactly the, for the installation directory and the remote script path here exactly and uncheck this for MFA. So once you start the DDT, you see that you see this kind of window. And the top, the top area, these are for the uh, you know, navigation, so like uh, advanced online, or going to the uh, uh, cold function, and get out from that uh, function to the uh, uh, calling function, for instance. Here, it shows the kind of directory uh, and what kind of functions are available in the source code. And uh, this, is, this shows the source code itself. And here it displays the values of the variables that are being currently used in, in the routine. So you can check the, the values itself. So you can check by just quickly you know, uh, viewing this thing to see that whether there's something wrong quickly. And also, this is called the spot line. This shows that the variation of that particular variable over different MPI ranks. So you can quickly check by glancing this, 
you can tell whether this is uh, something unexpected. In that case, then you can dig into that particular variable. So it gives a very quick uh, visual summary so that, uh, so this, this is a very good with the DDT actually. And here, it shows that the where, where the, uh, you are basically in that core stack for all the MPI ranks. So all the, I, all the 16 ranks, so I started with the 16 ranks, all of them are currently here, right? So if they are spread in a different location, it will show. It says that two ranks are here and the eight ranks are here, et cetera. So it's a kind of quick visual you know, uh, indication what is going on. This is where you can, you, you might want to check the certain variable, certain expression. You can enter this expression to see the value, whether that is something unexpected, right? Yes. Pearl, no. The Python people are still uh, trying to uh, lately integrate into DDT and the to total view. But the problem here is that uh, we are using Anaconda build mm -hmm. for Python, and uh, we need a debugging symbol for that the particular the Anaconda Python, which we don't have right now. Oh. So okay. currently, and there's this is this cannot be done. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any recommendation for the bad user? Yeah, I'm not really good about <laughs> <laughs> Python. Hey, Shreyas. Um, well, we all have the code in the oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, you cannot use uh, the uh, Python with a DDT. And the breakpoints and and that this, as I said, that the debugging tool. One thing that is good is that you can control the pace. And you can make it stop. You can run it up to, uh, up to a certain point. You can make it stop there, so that you can check the variables. So the way you do it, you kind of define the breakpoints. You know, I I pre, uh, pre I I set the where the, the the program should stop. Right. This is called the breakpoints. Or I can define certain points where that the uh, when the, the, the variables change its values, the program will stop. But it's called the what point. Trace point is where you, know, you, you may want to, if you use, if you, if you use the debug using the print st statement, you would say that print, I'm here, right? Something like that. So this is what, what it does. It basically, when you reach a trace point, it says that you reach that point. So you can make you know, certain condition to that so that uh, you can, the breakpoints can be activated under certain con condition. For instance, if there's a big loop, you can set that, you can make this breakpoint active when uh, loop, e loop variable is 10, for instance. So it will continue until the loop in, uh, variable becomes 10, for instance. So and as I said, you can check the variables quite easily. Uh, right click on the, uh, the DDT window. You can show the values like that. And then, as I said, that on the right hand side, it shows the local variables. You can exp uh, uh, the put an expression in the evaluate pane and so that you can check the, the uh, values of expression. The one thing, one nice thing is the MDA. This is a visualization tool for array, so if I click on the array and then select this functionality, I can display. Yeah, so you can clearly sh see that smooth kind of variation, which is good. If something, I made a mistake here, you may have a certain anomalous peak, you know, for instance, that indicates something. So quickly visually indicates whether something is going on right, correctly or not. You can actually see the statistics about the values. Total view is very similar. Uh, you, you start it that way, interactive job, and the load the total view module, and then you start total view using the, this kind of command with that work. And then you have to click some more step. This is less intuitive than the uh, DDT. But uh, you get basically two main windows, root window, that shows the status of MPI and MPI ranks and uh, threat, basically, 
whether it is, uh, it is at the breakpoint or whether it is running, et cetera. And here, this is called the process window. The function, you can do the similar thing as CVP here by click, right click on the variable. You can display the values of variable. You can check the values across all MPI ranks, whether that the variation is something that is expected or not. Or you can navigate through the MPI ranks or uh, threads by clicking on these buttons. So it's that. As I said, uh, this is a very lightweighted tool, but it's uh, very powerful. You can gather the stack backtraces uh, from all the MPI ranks. So if the code is hanging, then either you can make it sample the, the locations of, uh, from each, for all, all the ranks here. And then you can nicely display the uh, call, call tree from all the, uh, for the all the IPR ranks in a single plot. It's uh, very good. So it works on, uh, with the MPI, Core, Fortran, UPC, and OpenMP. So, so this is the way to use a stat to compile with a minus G, but with a usual optimization flag. So you don't have to make it O0, no optimization. You can make it highly optimized code uh, executable, but you need to use minus G here. You start the uh, uh, interactive job, and then you run S run in the, in the background, right? With the, the ampersand at the end. And then at that point, you need to load the stem module and the run the stat CL on that the process ID. And then what it does is that stat samples the locations, the, uh, the stack backtraces for all MPI ranks. And they create a file here, right? It says that the results are written into that directory. So at that point, you run the stat view to display the results graphically here. This is something that you see. So it says that MPI rank one is here, right? This is where the MPI rank is here. It is somewhere line 55. MPI rank 1 is line 52, and the rank 0 is 172, and the rank 3 is somewhere else. So you see this kind of thing because uh, actually I create uh, intentionally uh, the, uh, the infinite loop inside the MPI rank 0. So you cannot complete the MPI sentence we see because MPI 0 is kind of stuck somewhere else. right? From this, you can quickly check the where they are and go back to here, or you can use a DDT at that point because you now know that where the problem might be, right? So this is a very quick uh, uh, a tool. Uh, it's a very simple tool that can quickly tell you where to look, but it's very, very powerful. Another, the, the last tool that I want to mention is the ATP, Abnormal uh, Termination Processing. This is a great tool which is the stat, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning. So this one calls stat only when the program fails. When the program fails, it calls a stat to get the, that kind of uh, the data so that we can display this kind of thing here. Right? So it invokes stat underneath, and then it gen generates the output ATP merge BT dot dot or ATP merge BT underscore line dot dot. Okay, at the, and then at that point, you load the stem module, you display this result, you see something like that. So this is uh, a very quick you know, introduction, quick, quick tour about the, what kind of you know, simple tools we have, not the simple, but you know, powerful tools <laughs> we have on Cori. Uh, to, to debug the parallel code here. That's all I have. Any question? Okay. <laughs>